Howdy. It's summertime, my room is on fire. I'm cooking in here, it's actually really hot. And I'm thinking, you know what uh, burning alive reminds me of? Having to talk to people. I don't like talking to people. So uh, I, I thought it'd be pretty cool if I made like a dialogue system tutorial. So no more stalling, let's get right into it. All right, so first step, inside a star GUI, add a screen GUI and then add a frame. We're going to name the screen GUI since I don't want to keep typing dialogue, I'm just going to do the handler. It's the handler. And then we're going to name this uh, frame text box. Then inside of that, ah, no, not yet. We're going to change the anchor point of this frame to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And then we're going to change the position of this frame to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. So it's in the middle. Actually, we could just drag it down and scale it horizontally. Then change the first position back to 0 0.5 so it's in the middle. So now we have like this little simple text box. So we can turn the background transparency down a little bit. I'm going to do 0 0.3. We can make it darker. And then we can change the border uh, pixel size to be like 3. So now we have like this boring but functional text box. So we're going to add a text label inside of that. And we're going to scale the text label to match the text box. We're going to enable, uh, where is it? Ah, we're going to enable text scaled. And we're going to scale the top down. We're going to scale the bottom up. So the text is now a little bit smaller. So if we were to, for example, type, it fits. So we can just put nothing there. Oh, actually, I'm going to do text again. And we're going to set the background transparency to one. And now we can edit our text. So you can do like, I'm going to do white. And you can change your font right here. So we can turn on bold or italics. Uh, and then there's like a bunch of Roblox fonts. So I'm just going to pick like. I'm just going to do this really like ugly robot one. All right. So now we can insert a local script. And we're going to name it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Change this to uh, DGUI. We're going to change this to the handler. If this is what handles it, this is the UI. All right. So we're going to do local text. Uh, we'll just do local DUI equals for that parent. Local uh, text box. Text box equals script.parent. Text box. Local text label equals script.parent.textbox.textlabel and I think I have OCD because I don't like the way textbox looks so let's make it textbox with a capital B so we can just change this to textbox textbox all right it looks a lot better now so we're gonna make a few functions we're gonna make one the write text and we're gonna make one the uh and the dialogue so I'll explain that so local function write text and functions are pretty simple. Like every time you do this, it will print whatever's in here. Or like it will run whatever code is in here. So I can do print hello. And when I run this code, you'll see it did hello three times inside of the output. So that's functions. But for this one, we're going to add parameters. So we're going to put text and wait time. So these don't really have like meaning until we give it meaning. So what we're going to do is we're going to do local text, uh, oops, not local text label dot text equals text. Uh, let's add a sound inside of the uh, UI. Let's go to toolbox and I'm going to do sand sound. It's the recent one. So yeah, just a, whatever that sound is, we're going to add that and we're just going to name it talk sound and inside of our script we're going to do local uh, sound equals script dot parent dot talk sound text dot text equals okay we're going to make sound play but we're also going to make gui dot enabled equals true and text box dot visible equals true and we can do that's that wait uh wait time 
So the right text is done. So what we could do with this is you paste this function three times and right here you write whatever you want your text to be. So I love cheese. I actually don't like cheese. I prefer bread. And then the wait time we'll do two, two, and four. Then I'll do test dot wait uh, two. So I love cheese will be the text. It's gonna wait two seconds and then it's gonna move on to the next text. So we have our text, which yep, I love cheese. I actually don't like cheese. I prefer bread. And it'll wait a little bit longer, but it won't do anything yet because we have to make the uh, end dialogue function. So by default, I want GUI to not be enabled. So let's just do GUI dot enabled equals. Actually, we could just copy this. Let's set both of these to false. So if you play the game, there's nothing showing. So yeah, I love cheese. I actually don't like cheese. I prefer bread. So we can, we'll keep this and we're going to make a second function so we can copy Actually, nah. We'll just do local function and dialogue. God, motorcycle right outside my house. All right, so we have end dialogue. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this, put that in there, change these to false, and change text to be just a blank space like that. So after four seconds, we can call our end dialogue function. So, I love cheese. I actually don't like cheese. I prefer bread. And it's gone. So, during dialogue, I don't want, like, the dude to just be going ham, jumping around. So, let's add, let's, like, remove his ability to move. So, local, uh, player equals game dot players dot local player. Local character equals player dot character. Local. Uh, I'm too doing. Ah, nah. Humanoid equals character dot humanoid. So we can take this humanoid. We can put it into our right text. At the top, we can do humanoid dot uh, walk speed equals zero. And if you want to remove the player's ability to jump as well, uh, go into starter player. And I like to use jump power instead of jump height. So I'm going to set jump power to true. Right here, character can use jump power instead of star player. And then we're going to set humanoid dot jump power equals zero. And then copy both of those. And inside of our end dialogue, we are going to add dates. And we're going to put 16 and 50. All right, so now if we test it, you won't be able to move whilst the dialogue is happening. So when it starts, I can't move anymore. When it ends, I'll be able to move again. So there we go. Pretty simple, works pretty well. The only thing we need to do is you need to uh, make it so when you interact with a uh, player, the dialogue's triggered. So we can, we'll just keep this and we'll add, okay, I'm going to disable this inside of the starter GUI. I'm going to disable the DGUI. So, instead of workspace, I'm going to add a folder, and I'm going to name it Dialog Folder. And inside of that, well, I'm just going to make a part. I'm going to make a proximity part inside, a uh, proximity prompt inside of that part. I'm going to name that part, uh, for example, say the dude you're talking to is Joe. I'm going to make it Joe Dialog. I'm going to put that into the folder. And like, if I wanted to make like a little character, I could go here, lock avatar, R6. And I would just like attach this to this chest. So this tutorial is assuming the uh, characters aren't moving. I'll make an advanced like NPC tutorial with dialogue later. But for now, they're just not going to move. So you have this dude, he's just standing here. So we'll, uh, we're going to anchor the dialogue thingy we're going to turn the transparency to one and we're going to disable can collide on that part then inside of our script we're going to add local dialogue folder 
from scheme.workspace.dialog folder and then local. Uh, so like we can add like, I'm gonna put all of our dialog things here. It's gonna get like messy if you have a lot. Well, not messy. It's just there's gonna be a lot of dialog if you have like a lot of people to talk to. But we'll do like local Joe. Equals okay, okay. Local Joe dialogs equals dialog folder dot Joe dialog. So we can go down here. Now above here we can do Joe dialog dot triggered. Oops, Joe dialog. We need to actually get the proximity prompt there. The so Joe dialog dot triggered connect function, and we could just paste this in. Oops. So we have like this simple dialogue system. I am Joe. I'll make the second one just go and remove this one. So let's just end dialogue and uh, write text. It's really simple. So we can now interact with. Oh, wait. We need to disable the proximity prompt though. So. Go dialog dot enabled equals false, and at the end we'll do go dialog dot enabled equals true. So you can't like interact with the proximity prompt when you're talking to Joe. So let's actually let's change the dialog prompt. Like we'll just change the prompt text to like talk to Joe. And now we're good. If we play it, we can walk up to this man. We can talk to Joe. I am Joe. Joe. And we're good. We can't move around or jump whilst you're talking to them. It's pretty simple. So yeah, that's how you can make a really simple, like, just general dialogue. If you want to make a second dialogue, you would just do, like... We duplicate that, and we're going to name, like... Fred Dialogue. We would just change the proximity prompt to talk to Fred. And then we would just... Local Fred. Dialog equals dialog followed up red dialog dot proximity prompt. And we could literally just copy this and do red dialog and red red uh red dialog. Alright. So we have uh Joe Red. Uh we can add local Walking equals false, and we can go in here. If talking equals false, then it'll run. Else, ah, we don't need an else. You can just copy this and paste it into the other one at the end, and then we can add. Talking equals true, and talking equals false. So we can do the same thing for this top one. That's a little bit confusing. It's because I just remembered that, like, I need to add a failsafe so you can't, like, interact with multiple dudes at the same time. So if I put these guys together, if it works, it should make it so I can only talk to one. So I'm talking to Fred, and if I bring Joe's thing a little bit closer... So let's talk to Fred and talk to Joe. Joe's won't do anything until I'm done talking to Fred. And vice versa. So that's a little failsafe. So you can't like overlap and talk to multiple people. It just won't work. So yeah. That's how you make pretty simple uh, dialogue in Roblox Studio. I'll make an advanced tutorial soon with like NPCs. And like, because I'm making like an advanced cutscene tutorial. But yeah. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Uh. Don't explode, I don't know.